austère. You dedicate keen research towards science, technology, art, and their intersection with design and nature. How did you follow that up with your interventions here at Maison and Object as its designer of the year? Here we are in the autonomy installation, and um, and basically the idea here is to invent a new way of living. And in this new way of living, it means for me for us to be autonomous, autonomous in terms of getting some food, in terms of manage my safety in terms of provide energy. And, uh, and for that, of course, I need to include some techniques, specific, some technologies, some new research that for me, and that's a kind of paradox to be closer to the nature. Sometimes you need science, sometimes you need technology, some, some, sometimes you need some artifacts to be closer to the fundamental relationship with the nature. How does autonomy relate to your interpretation of Tech Eden, the theme of Maison and Object 2024? How does it escape, take off, breathe, live? Tech Eden, it's um, it's a kind of, it could be perceived as, as a kind of oxymoron by combining technology and Eden that is supposed to be a kind of paradise with nothing, just nature all around. So the Heidi, it really makes sense to find out the right balance between technology in, in the way that how can technology can provide you some services, some, some specific approach, and the nature that is basically since the very beginning of our history in terms of human being, that's to be as close as we can from the nature in terms of light, in terms of air, in terms of sound, everything. We need that. The idea here, of course, that you have noticed, we are not in the middle of the nature. We are just next to Paris in a fair. But my dream would be to install this installation in its right place. I mean, in the middle of nowhere. So in the middle of a forest or next to the, next to a river or next to the ocean. So, um, Maybe just after the fair, I will take it with me. I will discuss with my family, my wife, my kids, um, where we could install it. We will see if we kept it in yellow like this. I love the yellow because the yellow provides you the, the right energy, uh, the right vibration that I need, that human being needs, I guess. Um, but maybe we would be too much visible. So we will check. We'll bring it into, into the nature and we will see if we keep the fully yellow for the outside, or if we manage to be more discreet. The installation also gets us back to a singular question. What do we really need? Could you elaborate on that? What do you really need? Um, you know, it's there is often a famous question. If you have to leave to an island, what would you take with you? Many people said, I will take this book, I will take this art piece. More than that, we need several things. We need to get some energy. We need to get some uh, food. We need to get some water. We need to get some art piece that provide a kind of transcendency approach. So um, for me, in this installation, I have select that is for me, that are for me the fundamental elements that I need to take. So uh, I need to breathe clean air, I need to get some good food. I need to get some water. Here you can, we have a, a kind of a transparent bubble because in this way, it's our water tank to receive the water from the rain, to clean up, to filter it and to use it in our daily life. So we, we need to be in a kind of, uh, good relationship with nature, with, with what we need and uh, what the nature can provide to us. So it would mean that if we invent this life, we need to take off, we need to remove many objects, many artifacts, many devices that we have just to go back to the essential. Actually, it's for me a way to go back to our prehistoric cave, but 
by bringing with me the comfort, by bringing with me the available technology that can help me to have a good life. So it's always a question of balance. What is the experience you are hoping to build with the new entrepreneurial model of your factory in Paris? So recently, we have launched and we have opened a new headquarter very next to Paris that we call the factory. And, um, and this building, it's, uh, it's a super efficient tool for a designer. Actually, it's a dream for a creator because in this office, in this building, in this factory, I can go from the initial sketch that is only draw by hand and after that go to my studio and turn it into layout, plans, um, complex 3D renderings. And from that being able to make the first prototype test and to produce the piece and to assemble the piece, to create them and to ship them. So in the last five years, I have totally change my, my, my model, my business model, just by do not work anymore for other brands, but try to focus on the, on the journey between the first intuition and the final piece and to control every step of it. What is different at Maison and Object 2024 as it marks its 30 years? What I just uh, observe it's and what I can hear from people, it's the the level of quality the level of the quality of the brand of the product of the the pieces is more and more high and, and for me it really makes sense that after the pandemic for maison et objet it was not easy as you may imagine because there is less brand that came here because it was a messy moment for everybody and um and actually maybe they had a bit less um, brands, but higher quality. And, uh, and this place where we are, as you can see, there is no many things, very few things actually. So, um, in my opinion, it's better to get less things, but in a higher quality. Um, it's, it's better to, to focus on the, on the level of things more than on the quantity of things. As Mason and Objects Designer of the Year, what is your message for future creatives? Yes, this, this nomination of designer of the year, it's first of all, for me, it was a very good, for me, I, I leave this award just like a kind of hug, you know, a hug from the profession, hug from Maison et Objet Faire, that means that a kind of recognition. So, um, first of all, it was super, uh, comfy, super warm for me to, to receive that. So, um, the upcoming project for me will be to, to build this, uh, the, my company, to build my brand, to, um, to keep going on new collection, new pieces. And if I would have a message to, to the other designers, to the other creators, probably would be to do not spend too much time by seeing, by reading other designers' works. Um, the inspiration never come from other designers. The inspiration never come from other product. You need to create your own inspiration. So you need to be as close as you can with what we are deeply. Um, the way that people are thinking, the way that people are living, the way that people are loving, the way that people are sleeping. Um, and to, to, to listen carefully all those micro science and um, and bring inspiration from that and to turn this very first intuition into peace it's a long journey every single piece i develop it's take two two and a half three years it's quite long but um but it's the only way if you start to open a design magazine and say ah i love this piece i would like to be inspired by it you always been late, actually, because the time you will need to, to be inspired by something that already exists will always put you in late. So forget that. Close the magazine, open your eyes, open your ears, talk to people, see what the world is going on. And, um, and the inspiration, and for me, the most relevant inspiration will come from that.